Coming up, it's Green Bay in Arizona, a series that dates back to 1921. The Cardinals have won four of the last five meetings, and they look to add another one on Thursday night. EA Sports coverage of the NFL takes us to the Valley of the Sun and State Farm Stadium here in Glendale. It's certainly hot outside here in the desert, but somehow this Cardinal crowd turned up the heat a moment ago. They were in a frenzy as their team emerged from the tunnel, and the Cardinals, they're set to do battle with the Green Bay Packers. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. Lurching closer toward the midway point of this NFL season, and we're underway on EA Sports. And he opts to not bring this one out. The first drive will start at the 25. Arizona Cardinals offense coming out here for the first time, and you get a peek at Kyler Murray, the dangerous offensive weapon now in his third season in the National Football League. And I thought it was a really nice performance last week by him. Three touchdown passes. I think that signifies exactly what he was getting done. He did have the one interception. But that's the ratio you say you're okay with, right? If you go three to one, you're going to be pretty happy over the course of the season. And let's face it, he'll never blame the receiver publicly. But behind closed doors, he probably told his agent, hey, what's the deal? I should have had a perfect game. Now a nice play defensively on first down as this is knocked away and incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Out of the gun, here's Murray. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Defensively, you know, you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high powered, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20. Because to me, that's the magic number. 20 points scored gives yourself your, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. And I think so, because then you turn it into a shootout. And that means your offense has to keep pace. And now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. On fourth down, here's Andy Leon to kick it away. And the win last week punted four times as this one's away. On the return, it's Rodgers. The solid stiff arm. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and it'll be Packer football here. First down and 10. And we get our first look now at Aaron Rodgers in his 17th season now with the Green Bay Packers, and of course coming off a great 2020 where he took home the MVP trophy. And he ought to have a lot of pep in his step after last week's performance because he did exactly as you want him to play if you're a coach. Three touchdown passes, zero interceptions, which usually means you're making a lot of right decisions out there. And got him the win. On first and 10, here's Rodgers. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Well, Charles, you talk about this offense in this week eight of the 2021 campaign. Now, normally this would be the halfway point of the season, but as we all know, this now a 17-game regular season. And because of that, it seems like now maybe more than ever, getting your open week to occur later in the season, that could be a pretty big advantage. Brandon, it's always been a big advantage. And now, as you pointed out, the possibility of it becoming huge likely most teams want that later open date because of injuries you know getting that rest before the playoff push all of those things sometimes when you get an open date early in the season it's not very much of an advantage you might be playing well that slows down your momentum this is a big deal and teams definitely like it the later the better and he is going to have a packers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion Charles, they won last week despite him not running the ball well. They told us need to get him going. Runs like that help. And they talked to us about leaning on him because, as you noted, last week they didn't have to. Still won the ball game. They leaned on other people to give them the yardage that they needed, but they really want him to be that guy. 
And that's what they're doing early in this game. After the run by Jones, here's first and ten. Throwing is Rodgers. They're going for Lazard, but this is intercepted. Isaiah Simmons picking it off. And he'll take this back all the way up past the 45-yard line. So a first interception thrown for him there, and that really not the best decision either. Not at all, and that's something he did not do in their victory last week. No interceptions in that game, but this defense, they're able to take advantage of an early mistake. Now let's see if they're going to turn it into points. So the Cardinals offense back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. As mentioned, this one of the hottest teams in the NFL, riding that winning streak into this one. But now playing here on Thursday night, do you think that this helps or hurts their momentum? But ordinarily, I'd say it hurts the momentum because now you get that short week. But when a team's playing as well as they are, it actually allows them to down focus and only worry about themselves and less about their opponent. So when you're playing well, you just worry about the things you're doing well and let the opponent deal with that. Second and seven. Now the first carry for Chase Edmonds. And this Green Bay defense making that play look a lot like the previous one. Both tackles behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. This defense is a difficult one to prepare for, one of the best in the league. They'll come at you from all angles, and they did a nice job there stopping him for a loss. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. From the gun, Murray. Now he lets it go deep for Kirk. This is caught inside the 15. And he is going to have a Cardinals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. There's no doubt in my mind that not many guys in this league have had the impact that he's had here in the first half of the season. He's been a big play guy from the word go and continues to be one with another one right there. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Throwing now is Murray. And a quick throw here, that's complete. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Charles, Thursday night game, I think a lot of teams probably say shrink the playbook somewhat, is that correct? I think you're right about that because you just don't have the amount of time that you have in a normal week to put in a full playbook. So as you said, you shrink the playbook, pick out the plays that work best for you, and you know what else you're looking for? What's that? Who are the freshest guys coming off of the last game to play on a Thursday night? Guys that have a little extra pep in their step, you go to them early and often. That's out to the flat for Edmonds. Touchdown, Cardinals! Chase Edmonds, his first touchdown on the year. And the Cardinals have taken the early lead. One of the keys to their long winning streak has been scoring first. An ideal drive right there, getting the first six points of the ball game. Do you go back to our meeting with the offensive coordinator? Oh, yeah. what he told us? Absolutely. With some teams, I script to probe in the early part of the game. Other teams, I script to attack. They've been in attack mode for these ball games and continue that in this one. Extra point good by Prater. And that makes the score 7-0. So the drive there took six plays, and it results in a four-yard touchdown run. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. Hill is going to take it out of the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Now Aaron Rodgers in the offense heading back onto the field. And he'll look to rebound from the early interception that led to six points the other way. And when he threw the interception and he had to come to the sideline, I guarantee his first thought wasn't about the interception itself, but what could result. And I know he was thinking to himself, come on, defense, bail me out. Well, they weren't able to in this situation. Now he's got to go out and atone for it himself, but he can't force things. 
They'll start the drive with a carry by Jones. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. But he lost six there on the first down play. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Second and 16. To throw, it's Rodgers. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Buda Baker with a pick. And he'll take this back down inside the 20. And they'll take possession already in the red zone and in a great spot to add points to the scoreboard. And Brandon, how many times have we seen a defense with a lot of field behind them get even more aggressive, right? They feel like they've got them not pinned down, but in a favorable spot for them. And they took advantage of it there, got a nice interception, and set up their offense in great shape. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple at its second down. Meanwhile, Murray's throw pulled in by Hopkins. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. They'll run here with Connor. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Now a give to Edmonds. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Now we're going to get a stoppage here as we've got an injured Cardinal on the field. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Now they'd really like to make the short field pay off. We'll see if they can, but this is third and goal. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Able to hold him to just two yards, and now it's fourth and goal. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. And Prater's kick is on the money. It's good. And the lead moves to 10 zip. So a nice kick there as they are able to add on to their lead. And that's exactly what you're looking to do. Maneuver yourself into range. That way, if your drive stalls out, you're able to get something out of it. And they do so right there. Hill is going to take it out of the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. The Packers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. To this point, the results have not been good. Two possessions, two turnovers. And that's obviously something that can't continue, but to go a little bit deeper on that one, I would think about some play calls now, not even necessarily to my best player, but to someone I can trust with the ball, try and get things settled down a little bit. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And that is knocked away in the middle of the field and incomplete. And he's missed now in his first four passing attempts. The rhythm is just not there to begin this ball game. Here's second and ten. Here's Rodgers. And he rips that one incomplete there. Another incompletion there. That's five in a row now to start this game. He's got to take a deep breath now, step back, shake it off a little bit, trust his offensive line, and hope that his play caller dials up something that can give him a completion and get him going. Throwing his Rodgers on third down. And able to find Alan Lazard. And he's going to get this deep on of Arizona's side of the field. Oh, I know how I feel. Well, we know that he can beat you in a number of ways. He can catch it short, he can take it long, or he can do what we just saw right there, catch it, and then run with the football. Yeah, and this is what we mean when we talk about flipping the field, having your offense look at going a long way to a short way after he makes a play. His ability to do that, 
evident. He able to make the catch there, keep his momentum going, and just continue downfield. And you can see the distance traveled there after the catch on the next-gen stats. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now a first down carry by Jones. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. What a difference a play makes. A huge step forward and now a small step back as he loses a yard or two. On second and 11 now. Rodgers, and Rodgers intercepted a third time. Picked up by Mikel Roby Coleman, and the return just out across the 15 to the 16-yard line. Boy, Charles, that is now three interceptions in three consecutive drives, and you can see he's just got a look of disgust and bad body language, understandably, as he walks off the field. And I think it comes from the fact that he's not sure what he sees down the field, Brandon. I don't know if he's seeing ghosts. I don't know if he just can't read defenses. I'm not sure what it is, but that's why he's frustrated. And think about the defense right now. Every time they run on the field, they've gone from hoping to intercept a pass to expecting to intercept passes. Their confidence at an all-time high right now. After the turnover, here's Murray. Flush to his right. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. On play action, it's Murray. And he is going to be taken down. They got him. As that is going to take us to the two-minute warning. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half, as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. He'll air this one out for Kirk. And he's got it. What a catch on the sideline. The defense, they weren't fooled on that post route. They just couldn't make the play. And the offense definitely tried to fool them because you saw the other route combinations, didn't you? Anything that they were running trying to draw attention away from the deep part of the field, but still had it covered, yet they were able to come up with a nice play. So how about this for a change in field position? From inside the 10, here's first down on the other side of the field. Murray going to throw. Trying to force it to Hopkins, and it's intercepted. Kevin King with a pick. And a very good return as he'll take it all the way up to the 40-yard line. Well, this had trouble written all over from the start. He's got two extra defensive backs in the game he's got to deal with. They're in a dime set. So everywhere he's looking, he's seeing a different color jersey. And sure enough, this one winds up being intercepted. Here's Aaron Jones in the offense trotting back out. He's just been looking for some space. You know, I'm not going to pin it on him or the offensive line, but they need to get this run game going better. Sometimes you just have to credit the defense. They came in with a plan themselves. So I think now you try and mix things up a little bit. Get the ball in the hands of some other people, find some other playmakers, but always let the defense believe that he's still a threat. I was going to say, don't forget about it. No, don't take him totally out of the game. And he just gets rid of it, throws it away. The wise move there looked like nobody open. Now second down. To throw again on second down, Rodgers. Flushed out right. Now he's going to throw deep right side. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. I know he wants to get his team back in the game, but a 50-50 ball right there that maybe was a little questionable. Yeah, he's pretty lucky to get that one back. I think that sometimes these quarterbacks play with a lot of confidence that borders on arrogance, and that can put your team in some dutch. Yeah, especially maybe want to look at some safer routes after the interception he had that ended their last drive. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down, so hang on. A big call coming on third down. Some boos coming down right now from this home crowd after that call. Yeah, and that was because of the pass interference call, but for a second there, I thought maybe they'd gotten a look at my uh, appearance as Othello in the high school play. <laughs> you, you were Othello? 
Not and he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Another try after the first down sack. Rodgers, he's got the rookie from Clemson, Amari Rodgers. Thus far, it hasn't been a real fun half for them, but a play like that, that may get them off the schneid a little bit, get them loosened up and moving. Kind of seems like they've been sleepwalking and still sitting on zero points. And it's not always making an adjustment. Sometimes it's just going back to what you know can work and finally getting it done. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. And he missed it. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. And that's the risk of a long field goal miss here at this stage of the second quarter. You give up great field position. And that gives them one more opportunity to make something happen and something big. And we've seen crazy stuff happen at the end of halves. Murray's throw taken in by Green here. The Cardinals going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. On first and ten, here's Murray. Hurts over the middle. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Now the Cards going to call another timeout, their second, as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in the first half of play. First down, Murray. Green brings it in. A gain of six there on first. The Cardinals forced to burn their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Prater's kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 13 to nothing. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. The Packer offense ready to get their next drive underway as they go to work with 12 seconds on the clock. Rodgers now on first down. Escaping the pressure right. That is caught by Rodgers. And all the way inside the 35 before he goes out of bounds. As a general manager, you're counting on your first and second round draft picks to have a big time impact on your team. But where you make your bones, rounds three through seven. If you can find a few diamonds in the rough there, develop them, then you get something going, and we're seeing one right here. Now, plays like that lead me to believe that they found a diamond in the rough. Now, whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. And it is good. Oh, that one looked to be in trouble the whole way, but it does get over the bar. So we reach halftime here in Glendale with the Cardinals on top. As now we send you out to Orlando and hook back up with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. 